Hi, so hydrothermal carbonisation sounds awesome and it is, but it's much simpler than it sounds. It's been kicking around for, I don't know, 20 years or so, in fact since 1913, but active for about the last 20 years. And it is stunningly simple. What you do is you take yourself some organic material, and this can be just about anything that contains carbon, stick it in a pot, Add a little bit of acid, so we're talking dilute sulfuric, dilute phosphoric, dilute nitric, something like that. Add a bit of acid, stick a top on it, and boil the bejesus out of it. Now, I did my first how-to videos on this, so there are videos I've done on YouTube on how to do hydrothermal carbonisation back in 2013. I did another repeat set in 2016, and in 2017 we even made a video of how to make a battery from hydrothermally carbonising horse dung. And the video for that, it's on the channel, you can just look it up. The process is identical. Now you do need to get a bit of pressure in there, and it tends to be sort of 10 to 50 bar, something like that. And the temperature is anywhere between 180 degrees and 250 degrees centigrade. Once you do that, leave it for a bit, then the magic happens. What happens mimics nature. Nature forms coal under temperature and pressure over millennia. Hydrothermal carbonisation forms coal over hours. And it really is that simple. Now, unfortunately, your home pressure cooker won't do it because that'll take about one or two bar gets to about 120, 122 degrees centigrade, something like that. So an average standard home pressure cooker won't actually do the job. What you need is an autoclave. An autoclave is really just a pressure cooker that can get that extra bit of temperature and pressure, and you see them all over the place. Dentists use them for um, sanitising their bits of equipment, so they're everywhere. And I've got one right here that's a bit more of a lab piece of equipment. It's lab equipment because it's so chunky and we don't know what pressures we're going up to. You don't need anything as chunky as this. This is meant to go up to ridiculous temperatures and ridiculous pressures, but this is basically what an autoclave looks like, and it is basically a pressure cooker. That's all there is to it. So that is hydrothermal carbonisation, and it couldn't get any simpler than that. There really is nothing more to it. But when you put a piece of organic material in that kind of situation, all of the extra long molecules are broken up. They're chipped into little smaller molecules and some of the carbon gets left behind. And when you take the top out for that, what you get is a liquid and a solid. And the solid is a pure chunk of carbon. You can burn it like you can burn a, car a charcoal briquette. In fact, they're almost identical. So you get a solid chunk of carbon out of there, and then you get this liquid that's actually chock full of things like mm, phenols, volatile organics, uh, formic acetic acid, just a whole range of things that are in this liquid. And both of those things can be used in and of themselves. But it does something really quite awesome, actually. It will break up any organic material, including polyfluorinated alkyl substances, or PFASs. These are the so-called forever chemicals. They're really courtesy of our insatiable need for waterproof clothing, non-stick pans, and DuPont making that stuff. And apparently, everybody in the world now has PFAS in their bloodstream, which is just awesome if you think about it. But if we're doing that, and we don't want to get that back into the environment so we can do a cleanup, this method will actually break those down. And a research paper came out about that recently, about how super simple that actually could be using something like hydrothermal carbonisation. So it has a dual thing that it can do. It can really clean up that muck that's in there, including of, and this stuff that pharma and chemicals and PFASs, cleans all that stuff up creates a carbon briquette that can be burnt and creates this mysterious liquid. This mysterious liquid actually is of huge interest. It's of huge interest because depending on the conditions that you put in there, so temperature and the catalyst that you use, you can get all kinds of things out. One of the things you get out is uh, alcohols, and it can be like 40 to 50% of it comes out as an alcohol, and of course that is a precursor for biodiesel. So an awful lot of the liquid that comes out of here can be made into diesel and diesel additives, even with human waste. And that's the thing. 
This was so popular because what it does when it creates that carbon is it keeps the structure of the original material. Now that may not sound very important, but in terms of battery development and in terms of chemistry, it's hugely important. So, during that 20 year period, whatever anybody could stick in here, they were sticking in here. And that included things like uh, straw, hay, seeds, leaves, whole plants, just about anything that you could put in there. Tea towels went into there. Then somebody had the idea of taking a dump in there. And they did exactly that. Autoclaved it, hydrothermally carbonized it, and that's what they got out. They got out a completely harmless charcoal briquette. Because of course at that pressure and that temperature, all of those pathogens in there are dealt with in the same way as PFAS. They're killed and broken down into fuel. And so it comes out innocuous. There's nothing wrong with it. Which is a tremendous if you think about it. Now the liquor does have some metals in there, but they're easy to separate out. And you're left with these two fuel components where one can be used directly for a whole range of things. And we're talking about supercapacitors, batteries, concrete additives, fertilizer additives, fuel to directly burn. All of that can be made out of that charcoal briquette. And then this precious, precious liquid that is in fact a precursor for biodiesel. And several company, uh, countries, including Germany, are looking at using that for making biodiesel. So, hydrothermal carbonization, to recap, is stunningly easy. It's a pressure vessel, your carbon source, in this case poop, a little bit of acid, a little bit of water, a couple of hours at about... 180 degrees centigrade and round about 10 to 50 psi and you're away that's all you need to do with it now it's so stunningly simple that um somax have set themselves up to actually do this in the usa they've finally got their permits and they're actually running this to show that it is net energy positive they produce 153 percent of the energy that they use so of course they use some of theirs and the other they put back into the grid it does seem like one of those truly amazing systems that is beginning to be used in industry. The timeline really has been um, just getting it off the lab bench and finding a use for it, and then the other timeline is getting the permits, because of course we're dealing with waste and sewage, and so those permits can take years to get. I think Somax said it took them about three to four years to get their permits. But this is something that is being explored right now. Now, it is adaptable to a small scale level because people have been saying to me well how would you go around making a digester maybe making your own biogas now remember that liquid can be directly a digester feedstock or it can be chemically converted into a diesel additive or a, a, a fuel all by itself anyway what really excites me about this is that it can be done at home we've been doing this here for the last nine years and put the videos out there so it's doable at home to get yourself an autoclave or indeed make one and the other aspect of this that's really quite exciting is it doesn't matter if it's a uh, biomass, you can also do this with everyday normal plastics. So you have a huge opportunity for creating your own fuel, both in terms of carbon that you can burn and your own actual liquid fuel. So I thought I would share those thoughts with you. I hope it excites you and I hope you look at hydrothermal carbonization as a possibility. Thank you very much for watching the video and please do remember to like and subscribe because subscriptions really do help.